Number 17 from Paper 1 of the 2018 National 5. Three marks for a volumes question, essentially. You've got a square-based pyramid, so the base is a square. It tells you the length of the side of the square, but it doesn't tell you its height. Instead of that, it tells you its volume. It says the volume of this is 138 cubic centimetres. In that case, what's the height? Well, you just need the formula that connects it all. What's the formula for the volume of a square-based pyramid? Well, you won't find that at the front, you'll just find the general formula. Volume of a pyramid is one-third whoops, of the area of the base times the height. So it's just a case of putting the figures in. You've defined the height, that means you need to know numbers for these two. Well, I know that one straight away. V is 138. Obviously, a third is a third. What's the area of the base? It's a square. Area of a square, length times breadth, same as a rectangle. Six times six, that's 36 centimetres squared for the area of the base. So it's a third of 36 times H. Everything's a number apart from H, so you can find it. So you could simplify this side a little bit first. 3 into 36 goes 12. So it's 12 times H. Take that across, and I'll just write it the other way around, and that'll be your answer. 138 over 12. And then you go, oh no, how do you do that? Well, you'll just have to divide it, won't you? You could cancel it down to make it more manageable. They're both even, so they divide by 2. So you can knock it down to a 6 into at least. They also both divide by 3. A number divides by 3 if its digits add up to a multiple of 3. That adds up to 12, so they both divide by 3. That means they both divide by 6. You might spot that. Well, they both divide by 6, so I'll knock it down a bit. 6 into 12 goes 2. 6 into 13 is 2 and 1 over, so that's 23 upon 2. Now I can handle that. Half of that's 11.5 centimetres. Number 18 then, from paper 1 of the 2018 National 5 Maths. This is the trick identity question. Worth two marks. Express this funny looking chain of trigonometrical things in its simplest form. Show you're working. Oh, you only know two identities. Sine squared and cos squared makes one. That won't be involved. And tan is sine over cos. So that's what you're going to use. So sine x will stay, cos x will stay, it's a nuisance putting those wee degree signs in, but tan x can get rewritten as sine x over cos x. Now that of course means that these coses cancel out. So you're left with, and you could just go straight in with the answer, but well, I'll put it down here. With them cancelled out, you've got sine x times sine x, and that's written as sine squared x. And the way you show sine squared x is put the square against the sine, not against the x. Remember, that's equivalent to sine x squared. It's just a simpler way of writing it than that. Number 19 then, the last question in paper 1 of the 2018 National 5. It's worth 7 marks here and it's in three parts. Well, what's the first part? Take this quadratic and express it in this form. In other words, complete the square. What square could produce those? Well, square the first produces x squared, so that must be an x. Square the last doesn't produce that, but twice the product produces this. In other words, that 6 is twice the number that should go here, so it must be minus 3, just half that number. Now, finishing that off would say that should have been plus 9. I don't have a plus 9 there. And to take 9 from that, I'd have to subtract 9 from that, making it minus 90. Next bit says, hence state the equation of the axis of symmetry of the graph of this. Well, you know the turning point here is the opposite of this, is whatever it takes to make this bracket equal to zero. Maybe I'll put it down here, might be in a later part of the question. The lowest this can ever come to will be negative 90. And that will happen when this bracket is zero, because if you put anything else into that bracket, when you square it, it's positive and it's going to lift it up. So that bracket will be zero when x is three. So if that's the turning point in the graph, 
the axis of symmetry must go through the turning point, so the axis of symmetry is x equals 3. Now this last part says the roots of this equation, notice exactly the same quadratic as you had there, call it a trinomial if you like, which simply means it's a quadratic with three parts, can be expressed in this form. Notice there's a repeated digit there. That it must be something and then the same number again and then a different number. Find algebraically the values of D and E. Well, there's two ways you could do that. You could just start with this and write down the quadratic formula, putting in the various parts for A, B and C. 1, negative 6 and negative 81 and work your way through it and that would take you there. But another way of doing it, since you went to the trouble in the first part to complete the square, is to say this. Well, that's exactly the same as this. So x minus 3 squared minus 90 will equal 0. And then I'm only three steps away from this answer. Because to get to x, I need to get rid of that 90, rid of that square, and finally rid of that 3. So let's do that. So x minus 3 squared will be bring that across. That's 90. Next, get rid of the square, so square root of both sides, so that will be the square root of 90. A square root can be positive or negative. And finally, get rid of that, subtract 3 as a plus 3. I'd rather write it at the front though. So it's 3 plus or minus the square root of 90. Now it's just a case of, can you simplify that at all? Well, that's 9 times 10. I'll do it at the side. 90 is 9 times 10, and 10 doesn't get any simpler. So that's the same as root 9 times root 10. So that's 3 root 10. So finally you've got x equals 3 plus or minus 3 root 10. That's of this form. However, it did say find algebraically the values of D and E. So don't lose out on a possible mark at the end just by leaving it like this. So now we'll say, well that means that D must be these 3's here. And E must be that 10.